The world's most dangerous Trojan horse virus is known by the name of WannaCry, which attacked 230,000 computers across 150 countries. This Trojan horse was detected in 2017, but by then it had already caused damages worth $4 billion. A Trojan horse is a type of computer malware that sneaks into our computers or mobile phones by deceit. But the question is, why is this virus called a Trojan horse? The world's first Trojan horse was created in 1975, but actually, its origin dates back 3,200 years ago from ancient Greece, where modern-day Turkey exists. If looked at on the map, right southwest of Istanbul was a city named Troy. As was common in the old times, this city was built within a very large and strong fort, so that if the enemy attacked, they couldn't easily infiltrate. It's worth mentioning here that the residents of the city of Troy were called Trojans. This city was built on the coast of the Aegean Sea, and across the sea where the capital of Greece, Athens, is now, there lived a nation known as the Achaeans, whom we recognize today as the Greeks. It is believed that the rulers of both cities got entangled over some matter, and the Achaeans, or the Greeks, crossed the sea and reached to conquer the city of Troy. In those times, the Greeks were particularly famous for their martial prowess. They thought they would conquer Troy and return to their city. But despite continuous effort for many days, they could not break down the gates of Troy City. Then, they planned to siege the fort from all sides, so that all food supplies of the Trojans inside would be cut off, and they would be forced to come out or surrender to the Greeks. Days passed, then months, and then years. Whether it was the Greeks' weakness or the Trojans' resilience, it is believed that for the next 10 years, the Greeks failed in every attempt to infiltrate Troy. On the other side, inside Troy, the Trojan soldiers who were sitting within their own fort remained unmoved for so many years. But the Greek warriors, away from their homes for years, longing to see their families, had now lost their courage. The morale of their army was declining day by day, and many soldiers were insisting on returning home. When the situation became dire, the leader of the Greek army got an idea, and they started to build a very large wooden horse. The Trojans thought that maybe the Greeks were trying a new trick, but they couldn't understand the real reason behind the construction of the horse. After several months, when the horse was ready, one evening the Greeks announced that they were leaving forever. In the darkness of the night, they made it appear as if they were returning to their city. The next morning, for the first time in ten years, the Trojans did not find the Greeks outside their fort. When they went outside, the Greeks were nowhere to be seen, while the horse, left as a gift, remained there. For the Trojans, this was a moment of joy, and they immediately wanted to bring the horse inside their fort. An old man warned them against doing so, but they did not listen to him and joyfully brought the horse inside Troy, thinking it was a gift. That night, the Trojans were very happy and celebrated the end of the war. But when everyone was exhausted and asleep, a very large group of Greeks emerged from inside the horse. Yes, the Greeks had deceived them. Not only were they inside the horse, but their companions were not back in their city. They were hidden somewhere far away in the sea on ships. The Greeks who came out of the wooden horse first opened the fort's gate and signaled their hidden companions to come inside. After that, in the darkness of the night, the Greeks made up for ten years of failure and destroyed and burned down the entire city of Troy. This was the event from which the concept of the Trojan horse was born. The same Trojan horse that, even 3200 years later, is still finding ways to infiltrate our mobile phones and computers. Whether you fall for a scam, use an infected USB, or tap on a message about winning a lottery while playing a game, it will sneak into your mobile and then, with the help of its companions waiting behind, can destroy you in minutes. The first computer Trojan horse, created in 1975, was famously known as Animal. It was a very simple and harmless Trojan that was actually a game. The game consisted of 20 questions that needed to be answered. Whenever someone started answering the game's questions, the game would automatically copy itself to other computers in the same network. It was merely a joke where a game would copy itself to a computer without permission. But on January 19, 1986, the Trojan horse was no longer a joke. Two brothers from Pakistan, though with good intentions, ended up creating the world's first harmful virus. 
they had developed a medical software which people started using unauthorized copies of. It was the era of floppy disks, where their small software could easily be copied. To protect against illegal copies of their software, they created a virus that would copy itself onto the floppy disk, along with their software, and also corrupt the entire computer. As time passed, Trojan horses, malwares, and dangerous spywares began to mark their territory in the world of the internet. In 2010, three friends from Israel founded a company named NSO Group. They developed software that allowed tech support workers to access their clients' systems, with their consent. This software was originally created to provide support to customers, but a European intelligence agency showed interest in the product if it could access any system without their permission. Thus, their software had now transformed into spyware, which they named Pegasus. NSO believes that they provide access to this spyware only to governments, to combat crime and terrorism. Soon, this spyware became so successful that Israel considers it a cyber weapon and distributes it only to countries it desires. Whether it's an iPhone, Android, or any mobile phone, just by entering the mobile number, it attacks the user's phone. The presence of this spyware in the phone means that from the gallery to the camera, messages, calls, and even live location can easily be monitored by the attacker, even if you have your location services turned off. In 2017, NSO Group had 500 employees, which grew to 750 by 2021. Tech companies like WhatsApp and Apple are so troubled by this spyware that in 2019, they filed a case against NSO in American courts. WhatsApp claimed that Pegasus had been used on more than 1,400 users, including human rights defenders, journalists, military, and civil officials. Pegasus, which was created to fight crime, began to be used for political and national level spying. It is believed that Pegasus was used in the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, where information about Khashoggi entering the Saudi embassy was known beforehand. When the scandal became significant, NSO eventually revoked Saudi Arabia's access to the spyware. In 2019, The Guardian reported that Pegasus was being used to monitor high-ranking officials of the Pakistani army. There's no doubt that Israel considers this spyware an important tool of its foreign policy. During the Russia-Ukraine war, Israel refused to give Ukraine and Estonia access to their spyware, fearing it would be used against Russian officials, as Israel does not want to spoil its relations with Russia. 3,200 years ago, only one Trojan horse was born, but today, millions of Trojan horses are spread across the internet, looking for their next victim.